YouTube Frogs, 1.4 is finally here for Honkai Star Rail, and that means the long-awaited arrival of our Ice Queen, Jing Liu. If you guys have been waiting for a hyper carry to invest in who's really simple to play and deals crazy amounts of damage, both single target and pseudo AoE, this is your girl. In this video, we'll be covering all you need to know from how our skill set works, optimal light cones, relics, recommended stats to achieve, Adelons, and best teammate synergies to run with her. Let's begin. So, Jing Liu's main gameplay gimmick is her Spectral Transmigration State. This happens when she gets two of her Syzygy stacks indicated by her character tooltip. When she's in this state, she gains massive bonus crit rate, her skill is enhanced and becomes essentially a mini ultimate, and whenever she attacks, she sacrifices her teammate's HP to increase her own attack. This is when you want your Jing Liu to deal all of her damage, which she will be doing with her enhanced skill and ultimate, which I'll explain in a bit. So, for the five core basic parts of her kit, we have basic attack, which is never intentionally used, only a last resort if you are out of her state and you have no skill points to use her skill. And then for her skill, in her normal form, she deals single target damage and gains one stack of Syzygy. She needs two stacks to transform. In her special state, it deals pseudo AoE damage, it targets one main target and two adjacent targets, and you lose one stack. Her talent is a big essay explanation, but basically it boils down to this. When she gets two stacks, she enters a special state and gains 100% action advance, which means she immediately goes again. In this state, she gains 45 to 50% crit rate, but between level 6 to level 10, her skill is enhanced, and when she attacks, she consumes ally HP to buff her attack. In her tooltip, she gains an extra empty orb indicating a max of 3 stacks in this state, and once she is out of stacks, she will revert to normal form. For her ultimate, it deals big pseudo AoE damage with a main target and 2 adjacent. She gains 1 stack of Syzygy, regardless of her normal or special form. And then for her technique, out on the field, she generates an icy field around her, freezing enemies around you, preventing them from ambushing you. You can now switch out of her, as long as an ally initiates combat while her ice field is on, she'll start with one stack and enemies have a 100% base chance to be frozen in combat. This is mainly used to start the battle with one stack. So overall, pretty simplistic character. Gameplay wise, when she's out of her state, you'll spam her skill for the stacks and then her ultimate and enhanced skill are what are used for damage. This means you want to save your ultimate until after you enter her state. So her attack rotation looks like follows. First, we're trying to get two stacks for her. Either this is possible with one technique and one skill or skill twice. Then she transforms, gaining an enhanced stats. Now you can use your ultimate to gain one stack for a total of three. Then you can use your enhanced skill up to three times, revert to normal form, and then repeat. Optionally, if you do have Ting Yin on your team comp, you may be able to get off another ultimate for plus one stack in the middle of her rotation with Ting Yin's burst. For talent priority, max out everything and ignore the basic attack. In my opinion, a little more emphasis on the talent and the skill, as the talent gives her crit rate and bonus attack. Her skill is 70% of her damage output, and then after that, you can level her ultimate. Basic attack is almost never used, so you can be left at whatever you want. Trace nodes. Her ascension trace nodes give her effect resist in special state, 10% action advance after using her normal skill, 20% ultimate damage in the special state in that order. Branch nodes give speed, crit damage, and HP. To get all of the speed and crit damage nodes, you basically need to unlock her whole tree, except one HP node, which doesn't even cost much, so essentially her tree is maxed. To get the top right crit damage node, she does need a level 80, which is very worth because it's 10% crit damage. Alright, let's take a look at Light Cones. So she obviously has her signature Light Cone, which is incredibly powerful, granting crit damage, damage percent when allies lose HP, which is automatically 3 stacks whenever she's in her special state, and ignore defense at max stacks. Besides her signature, I would go for the following Light Cones in this order, especially for F2P or budget players. So we have Fall of an Eon, which you can get from her to store, easily superimposed to level 5, best option besides her signature, which provides her decent stats. 4 Star Secret Vow, which is Arlen's Light Cone, 20% universal damage bonus is extremely valuable, even when considering lower base stats of 4 star light cone versus 5 star. And sometimes you'll be able to get additional 20% if enemies have higher HP. Plara's something irreplaceable for attack and conditional damage bonus. Bald's unreachable sign just for the crit rate, making it easier to build to her cap of 45 to 50% crit rate. Dill's brighter than the sun, same thing as Bald's light cone, just a worse passive. And if you have none of the above, you can run moles, but at this point, I would just take Fall of an Eon from 
from whoever's using it or farm for it from her to store. Relics and planner ornaments. So best in slot setup is obviously going to be four piece eyes and two piece rudolent arena. Note that rudolent arena crit rate threshold takes into account her enhanced crit rate when in the special state. So this is very easy to activate. You don't need that many crit sub stats to achieve it. Alternatives, we have four piece quantum set. So this is mainly used for the defense reduction. It must be used against quantum weakness. And also it's better paired if you have supports like silver wolf. Then we have two piece ice or two piece attack percent. These will always work. And that's really all we have. Either we go four piece ice for the best in slot setup. You have the unique quantum set or you go in two piece set. Now for the planner ornaments, if you don't have two piece rudal in arena, then space ceiling station is the second best. And then I would place inert salsoto third best due to her ultimate only being 30% or less of her total damage. Overall though, I would try to force two piece rudal in arena since her enhanced skill is most of her juice. Main stats, very simple design. Since she has a lot of built in crit rate from her special state, you almost always run a crit damage body piece. The boots can be speed or attack. The orb is always ice and the rope is almost always attack. Very rarely would you run ERR because you're not really ulting off of cooldown. You're ulting at specific parts when she enters her state. So the boots depends on Bronya usage. If your Bronya is super, super fast, I would say 150 or 160 or even 170 speed, go attack boots and utilize Bronya's E to continuously boost her up. Otherwise, I would go speed boots. With her trace notes giving nine total speed, she reaches 130 with five star speed boots and no substats, given her base of 96. To reach 134, then you just need two substats worth, which is pretty easy to get. And then for her rope, I find that the attack rope is way more utilized than the ERR rope, since usually she's not spamming ultimate off cooldown like I explained. She's waiting for her special state windows, which means her ultimate looping is usually four to five turns and only skips the rotation if Teen Yun is used to get an extra stack during her special state. Recommended stats to achieve. So at E0 S1, with all trace nodes unlocked, level 80 character and weapon, this is what I'd expect. Speed boots, you'll have 2000 attack or more. With attack boots, you'll be reaching 2.5k attack or more. Crit rate, hover between 45 to 50%. This gives room for her enhanced state, which grants you 45 to 50% bonus, which means that you'll be hovering between 90 to 100% with that crit rate margin. And then crit damage is 200 plus, very easily achievable, especially with trace nodes and crit damage body piece. Her speed, her base is 96 plus 9 or 105. So either she stays this way or you push 134, 135 for that threshold. And that's basically it. She only cares about offensive stats, so energy regeneration rate will stay 100% unless you offer an ERR rope, which I don't really recommend because it sacrifices too much damage. Adelons. So from my experience, Jingli is one of those characters who really gives her all at E0. Her E1 grants crit damage plus 24%, and if only one target, then her pseudo AoE damage on her ultimate or skill combines to that one target. Overall, it's a decent gain, but probably won't be as noticeable as you think, because most boss waves where this would be utilized usually try to maintain more than one target by summoning ads or having maybe too many bosses. E2. 80% damage boost to the enhanced skill that immediately follows her ultimate. This will usually be used once per rotation, which is about every four to five turns. Or if you have the energy boost with Ting Yun, you might be able to get an average three to four turns because you'll get Ting Yun ultimate every other rotation or maybe every rotation. E3, E5 is your standard level increases. E4, slightly more attack from her special state. This does not change the HP loss from team members. It only changes the gain that she receives, which is quite nice. E6, extended special state duration by plus one one turn from an average two and a half to three and a half turns and crit damage plus 50% during the state. So if you're going E6, you will likely run Bronya plus Ting Yun for the Giga Hyper Carry support comp and maintain her special state for probably 4.5 average turns with a really boosted Ting Yun for massive ults every rotation. This is pretty impressive DPS uptime because you maintain 50% crit damage for a lot of her damage. Overall though, solid Adelons. They all increase her offensive kit power with no drawbacks. However, as an FTP or budget player, E0 is perfectly fine. You'll notice that there are no substantial gameplay changes unless E6, which just makes her special state last longer. Team Synergies. So with Jing Liu, we're looking at mostly supports that work best with her since she is considered a hyper carry. As an attack scaling DPS with easy to hit 100% crit rate cap, she's mainly looking for attack, crit damage, and ult energy boosts. And because she consumes HP of your allies, even if the enemies are not attacking you, your team will still lose HP over time. This means for our one survivability unit, we need someone who can consistently heal or top off the team. So most generic team comps will then operate off of the following. We have one abundance preservation that can heal, 
we have two supports and we have one Jing Liu. For the one abundance preservation slot, we want someone who can heal the whole team. So we have Luocha, Fu Xuan, Lynx, Bailu, Natasha. And then I have lower recommendations for those that can't heal, like Japard, MC, and March 7th, who do provide shields but they do not have an easy access AoE team hail. And because Jing Liu consumes your own HP, even if your allies don't get attacked, they're still losing HP. So best harmony support synergies. We obviously have Ting Yun, Bronya, and then secondarily Asta. Most of you guys will prioritize Ting Yun and Bronya as their buffs are fully offensive and allow her to maintain high DPS uptime. Asta's bonuses are great, but are slightly conditional on maintaining her charge stacks for that attack bonus. Optional Nihility support synergies. We have Pella or Silver Wolf, and the reason between those two are for their death reduction. Additional points if you have E4 Pella for her additional ice res reduction. Unique synergies. Well, of course. How could I forget the only character in the game who loves to lose HP for the sake of doing more damage? Bald. In a bald Jing Liu duo destruction composition, Jing Liu helps bald lose more and more HP to assist his destructive desires and kill everything. Throw in Luocha in there, add an Appella for AoE death reduction, and boom, you got a duo imaginary ice comp. In this particular composition, I would less recommend the harmony supports because you have two DPS here. Now, Bronya is still okay because she has an AoE team boost, but Ting is mostly single target. You can only benediction one person, but it really depends on how you rotate it. You can still make it work, but in in general, I would recommend the death reduction because it is for the enemies. This assists both Bald and Jingli to do more damage. And that should be a pretty encompassing guide on Jing Liu. Overall, I think she is an impressive ice DPS that is introducing unique power creep features with her ally HP consumption to deal more damage. With an easy to build around kit with limited restrictions on stats, I find that she is pretty budget friendly given that she can use FTP resources without too much loss. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Good luck on pulling for Jing Liu. And as always, we'll see you next time. Take care.